Good morning, friends. It is the fourth annual Instagram controls my day. I can't see you. Or rather, Instagram controls my two days. I usually do this over a weekend. Uh, this time I'm doing it for Friday and Saturday, so I can post this on Sunday. And it's just gonna be a series of Instagram stories for the next 48 hours where you tell me what to read, what to buy, what to do. So I'm gonna get ready for the day and then we'll begin. So it's a cold and snowy winter morning. You can see the sun trying to peek out. It's currently negative four. But my weather app tells me it's supposed to be sunny. Rob left for work. I'm in charge of taking Liam to school. And after that, we're gonna kick this whole thing off. So last night before I went to bed, I posted my first um, really low quality, just informative story that I was doing this. And then my first two things, which is um, what should I do for breakfast and what should I do for coffee? And it's just avocado toast twice. I can either buy it or I can make it. Okay, make avocado toast 77%. That one completely makes sense. If you can make your own avocado toast, why would you not? There's just a local diner that makes a really incredible avocado toast. What about coffee though? This one, oh, I'm gonna buy it. Okay, 61% said buy the coffee. So while I drop Liam off, my braids fared pretty well overnight. I will pick up some Starbucks. Um, I do like making my own coffee, but I prefer like chai. From Starbucks if I'm gonna get chai I would rather buy it than make it which I know sounds blasphemous okay this the curls are looking a little more rough than I had hoped but they're good enough for carpool what's not gonna fly though is these pajamas so let's change this sweater is from American Eagle the pants are from Superstore they're the Jillian Harris like collaboration so they have this cute little heart on the tag and my house is filled with little papers everywhere because Liam's been making these what are they called paper poppers. paper poppers very cool and while we're out i'm going to post my next poll which is going to help decide what book i'm going to read today i'm going to try to read three books over the next two days and you can kind of dictate all of them what 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 does that mean does that mean cool no Love you. Hi, love you. Good morning. Welcome to Starbucks. How are you doing today? Good. How are you? I'm doing well, thank you. What can I get started for you today? Can I get a venti almond chai with a shot of espresso? For sure. All right, that's just 814 at the window. Thanks. You're welcome. So making my own avocado toast doesn't actually involve toast. It involves hash browns. So I'm going to pop these in the oven and then cut up my avocado when they're done they, this takes like half an hour and i might fry up a quick egg on top but this is how i justify my addiction to tiktok is i learned so many life hacks so this is 24 hours old and i just put it in water and look how incredible the other half looks i now keep all of my avocados in water like <laughs> once my avocados are ripe i'm sure a lot of people know this but i put them fully submerged in water i used to put them in the fridge and they would last a little while but now as soon as they're ripe i put them in here and these never like never go bad i never cut one open and it's like gross so while we're waiting for the hash browns let's talk about my tbr this section of my tbr shelf you'll find my immediate tbr these are things that i hope plan to read in the next six weeks. We've got a mix of things, just this is like a lot of my own personal TBR, not for videos. This is my book club selection. Some more just personal, personal reading plans. And then this second half over is video plans, at least the ones that are public. I also have 15 books that are like for secret TBRs that I haven't talked about publicly yet that are coming out in December. But so my goal with this Instagram story is what do you want me to read today? Should I pick something off of my personal TBR or start um, reading and filming for one of my YouTube TBRs? I have no preference. I'm not a mood reader. I do not care what is chosen for me, but after you vote on this one, then I'm going to pick two books to go up against each other in an Instagram post instead of a story. So I can count the votes and it's a little more like interactive than just you clicking a button. But in order to do that, the sun needs to come out because I need to be able to take like a nicely lit photo. So I think if you vote for something from my personal TBR, I'll probably just go for some of my short things. It'll be like 
Daphne versus When Life Gives You Mangoes. And then if you choose something for a YouTube project, I again will probably go for some short things. Some of the shortest things I have planned are We Spread. And then this one looks long. It's Gwendy's Final Task, but it actually has a really large font and is full of images. So I've heard that this reads really quickly. So I guess what you're actually choosing is if I'm reading just for me today and you here or if I'm also vlogging simultaneously with this for a December vlog. So I'm gonna go eat breakfast, watch Good Mythical Morning, and then check the poll. Poll results are in. It looks like you voted for something off of my TPR, which makes total sense. So I'm taking a picture of these two that are gonna battle. Obviously, I guess if I'm already reviewing some books in a vlog, you don't wanna see those books again. So you're gonna pick books that I'm not already filming a video for. Okay, so I posted a picture of these two. And while this poll is running, it does look like Daphne's gonna win right now. Um, but while that's going, I posted two other polls. One, if I should go book shopping today or tomorrow. I kind of think you'll pick tomorrow and I'm hoping you do because I like book shopping with my family and maybe you want to see them. But also I just went book shopping like two days ago. Not that I wasn't gonna end up there anyway. And then the other poll is what work I need to do today. So I can edit some YouTube stuff or I can do some Instagram stuff. Again, I have a bit of a preference um, and that's YouTube because the sun is not really out yet. I know it looks okay, but it's actually pretty cloudy. It says the sun's not supposed to come out until like two and doing an Instagram session when it's this overcast is not easy. But I just took that picture and then I took another one so I can promote my haul later because I'm gonna be taking that photo down and replacing it in just a couple hours. So this one has been running for an hour and you voted, oh, you voted today on my own. So I guess I'm taking my little book bag and I'm gonna go, I'm not gonna go to the bookstore bookstore because I was just there, but I will go to the thrift store and hopefully I see some things and you can vote on what I need. And then as far as work, you said YouTube which is perfect. I have quite a few videos in need of editing. So once I get home, I'll check the poll results of these. I do think that Daphne's gonna take it. So before I go, let me tell you what this is about. There's a basketball hoop and we're following a girl named Kit. It's her last summer before college. She's on the high school basketball team. On the eve of the big game, one of the other players tells a ghost story about Daphne a girl who went to their school many years ago and died under mysterious circumstances. But I think the vibe is like Bloody Mary. If you think about her, if you say her name out loud, you're kind of conjuring her. But based on the super low rating that this has, I have a feeling it's not really gonna be horror in that way. It's more gonna be a coming of age story, maybe in the vein of the Paul Bearers Club. So there's like a paranormal idea, but at the end of the day, it's just about a girl finding herself. And the way that she does that is finding something she's like passionate about, which is solving the murder of Daphne. So let's go to the thrift store. So I'm at a value village I haven't been to in so long. And the first thing I saw is people we meet on vacation. And I thought, okay, this is gonna be a jackpot today. I'm gonna give you four options. I'm gonna find something from each like genre that I would really wanna read. And then after that, I found kind of nothing. <laughs> but I still wanted to do the poll, but I basically did it knowing that this one was gonna win. But I feel like I gave the poll its best chance because there really was nothing, like not even a thriller that I somewhat had heard of and would be interested in. So I found this book called Salt and I put that in there because I just talked about wanting to read books with salt in the title. And I thought maybe some of you would vote for that. And then I put another romance in there as if I'm starting my romance era and I needed your help. And then I put ask again, yes, because I've heard of it and I don't know what it is. That one actually got the second most amount of votes after half an hour. I just ran across in the meantime to HomeSense. I didn't wanna ask you if I should go cause you might say no and I needed to look for Christmas decor. But so I just ran back in and I bought People We Meet On Vacation. This is by Emily Henry. It's a little bent out of shape, but it was $6. So excited to own it. Someday I'll read it, I swear. And it got 45% of the vote. HomeSense wasn't a huge win either. Like nothing was really calling to me, but I think it's because I haven't pulled out my Christmas decor yet. Like I don't really remember what I have and how I want it to lay it all out. But one thing I did find 
is this little pink tree. And then last year our nutcracker broke and he was the thing that listed how many days there were until Christmas. So I recently replaced him in a vlog, um, but not the countdown. So I got this one, which I feel like is subtle and simple and white. And there's a star in here that you like move. And it's just something for Liam to do every morning is like move it and know how many days there are until Christmas. So since that experience was a little bit of a bust, I thought I would sit here and start Daphne just so I could tell you about it. So I'm 50 pages in, a little past 50 pages in, and something very horror-like has now happened. And I feel like I can already tell why some people are not vibing with this. There are no chapters. There are little dividing dots between some scenes, but they are few and far between. And it's a very kind of stream of consciousness, um, also like diary entry type of vibe. It's not so much Paul Bear's Club, but it feels like My Heart is a Chainsaw meets We Ride Upon Sticks meets My Best Friend's Exorcism. As far as like the tone and the voice of the character, what's fun is these girls are on a basketball team and they like will shoot and ask a question and if they if the ball goes in then like that thing that they just asked is true and it's like you have to try really hard not to think of horrifying things while it's happening like they're asking questions like am i gonna are we gonna win the next game is my boyfriend cheating on me that kind of thing and they feel like there's this kind of power with the net and then someone tells the spooky story of this woman named daphne and she was from the 80s and 90s she was a seven foot tall always wore denim from head to toe um, and wore like kiss makeup. And now our main character Kit is talking to her parents and she's like, who's kiss? Like, what does that mean? What type of makeup are we talking about? And then there was one section that was following a different girl. And I was like, how is this gonna be important? And then I found out and I wonder if we're going to meet like lots of different people or if it's mainly gonna be following Kit. I am very intrigued so far. But I do feel like I should swing by another bookstore just to have another like more fun poll because I did plan with this one to leave with like the two top voted ones or like one that you picked and one that I picked but this was clearly the only selection so let me go do that really quick all right the mall was a bit of a bust I don't know how I talked myself into going to the mall on a Friday afternoon anyway um I didn't want to just buy something to buy something though and I didn't really see any books that I wanted to spend money on and put up against each other just for the Instagram. But I did get a Jugo Juice, a mango one. And I didn't need a poll to decide that because Jugo Juices are like a dying breed of smoothie places. They are so hard to find. And the mango and the mango one is so much better than the booster juice one because you'll get like almost boba size mango chunks once you especially get to the bottom and it's just an experience like no other. I'm gonna head home though and get some work done and read. I'm home and I'm back in my pajamas and everything's right with the world again. And Daphne, it's going very well. And this is just, it's totally my speed. I was gonna say it's like a metaphor for anxiety, but it's not, it like literally is a story about anxiety. Our main character is writing in her journal constantly about how much anxiety she feels and how she wishes she didn't have anxiety and just describes what it feels like. And Daphne plays into it because it's this idea of manifestation and that's the fear like not being in control of your own mind knowing that the things that you're worried about get worse the more you think about them but brain stuff is not always reasonable it's not always manageable it's not always understandable and you can't talk yourself down just like you can't stop thinking about dying so there are deaths happening um but it's all very vague. I wouldn't call this a scary one, but I do feel very on edge. And I think that's because of like the stream of conscious style of it, which I think some people might find boring. I haven't read a single review for this, so I don't know what other people think of it, uh, except that it has a pretty low average rating. The final votes was like two to one, Daphne versus um, mangoes but I think I might put that one up in another poll for tomorrow I'm gonna get through this in the next like two hours and then I have to edit like I promised you I would and we're already gonna be at like dinner time so I'll need to consider some other polls to put up but I'm gonna do an audiobook tomorrow and I'm probably gonna put four up against each other but this is going great and I'm so glad that this is what I'm ending up reading for this blog 
I finished Daphne and I have such good news. It's five stars. I feel like I wouldn't recommend this to everyone, but I was actually surprised when I went to the Goodreads. Um, a couple of my friends have given it five stars, so it's not everybody who doesn't like this. I'm giving it like a soft five, as in I don't think this would beat out any of my other five stars that I've given this year, but five stars absolutely feels correct for this. I do wish there was a little more like music reference because like the one we got regarding Kiss you know, as somebody who grew up with Kiss, who had a father in a Kiss cover band. As someone who is just a diehard fan for Detroit Rock City, my favorite terrible movie. When she brings a Kiss to her parents and they introduce her to Kiss and then she's like, what is this? It doesn't sound like metal, it sounds like um, disco. There are just layers like to that reference that we also get from like Detroit Rock City. But everything else, like pure perfection. It's a really psychological horror. It is about like manifesting fear. And while there's not a lot of depth to any of the side characters, like this isn't the type of horror, it gets a little slashery, but it's not like you connect with the characters and you feel bad, but instead you do get to learn like Daphne's story and there are a couple like reveals about her life, her as this urban legend, and it's just really interesting because everybody has a different idea of what happened to her. Um, the legend is that like a bunch of bullies framed her death to look like it was her taking her own life. That's like at the very beginning of the book. And every single person who tells the story tells it a little bit differently, which is just such the nature of storytelling. I think there was the right amount of like creepiness the idea of this entity is frightening and there are some descriptions that are uncomfortable. And overall, I just thought it was really solid. I'm glad you picked it and I hope I feel that way about the next thing you picked. Although technically it's me who's picking the movie. But I asked if I should do like a TV marathon. I was just going to watch um, all of the Christmas episodes of Gilmore Girls or a movie night where um, that's what you chose and I'm going to watch Spirited with Rob because it just came out and it's like holiday season vibes. Since I'm not yet decorating my house, I'm saving that for my next vlog. I feel like this will put me in the holiday spirit. Sorry, it's been a while since I've seen you. I was lying in bed for like two hours. Um, my heating wasn't working and the house was so cold and I wrapped myself in my heated blanket and I just lied there waiting for the heat to come back on. And then Rob came home and he had a rough day and we had dinner. I did ask a couple other poll things. So a decision for tomorrow, um, if you want me to do some like wordle, quirtle, global games in this vlog or if you want me to visit some little free libraries because we are headed into town tomorrow i'll add that segment into the vlog and then i also asked about what audiobook because tomorrow while we're going around i it's more reasonable for me to listen to an audiobook than read physically so i just grabbed the four books that i have on my tbr shelf that i have available in my library app and those are the devil takes you home gwendy's final task such sharp teeth which are all for an upcoming vlog and then small game which is another one that's just for me and i'm not going to check the results of that until the morning and then i'm also going to post one more thing right before i go to bed um asking for any like q a type questions regarding i don't know like reading or content or whatever and i think i might like randomly scroll and select like five questions to answer in the morning and so i will see you then it's Saturday I got a package from American Eagle from their big sweater sale and I have two super bright sweaters so we're gonna do an Instagram story where you choose between this one which is orange <laughs> and this one which is pink so I'm gonna post this right after I finish getting ready and we'll see what I'm reading today I have a few hours just to do stuff around the house and then we're heading into town at like two so i can listen to an audiobook while i like get stuff done and i'm going to be reading oh and also i'm going to a free little library or a couple um maybe i'll gather together some books to like give and then i'll see if there's anything good in them and then the winner of this is oh such sharp teeth with 44 percent of the vote this is one off of my tbr that i'm less interested in than others so i feel like it's a good thing to start with this both of these go with this quite nicely so i'll be matching my book today oh yeah and then the q a manny asked are you doing any goodreads choice reading this year which is a fantastic question 
Um, I am doing the horror category. The goal is always to do the top 10 and I feel like I, it's clear that I'm doing the horror category, but I guess that's me like officially saying it. I am doing more within the choice of words, but I am doing the horror category, but that's not all. Katie asked if you could perfectly recreate any look for Halloween, what would you dress up as? And I know exactly what my answer is um, because I've always wanted to be um, the paper bag princess. If I was ever gonna do like a book character, that's the only one I could ever think that I would be interested in doing. Um, but I've never followed through with it. I feel like the moment has kind of passed because it should have been like a family, maybe costume of like Rob and me and Liam as the dragon, but they're like, that would be cute when he was little. But also Halloween in Canada being the scantily clad would not be a thing um, out in public unless we were going to like a Halloween party. Maybe at some point in my life, this would be reasonable if you were forced to read only one genre for a year what genre would be your worst nightmare huh my mind went to like least favorite genre which i don't know what that is but like my most unread genre is probably like true crime like you're never gonna find me reading a true crime so i feel like that would be something that i can't imagine having to read in general but having to solely like only read that exclusively read that that'd be nuts next one if your life were written as a cozy mystery romance what would your title be i don't have an answer for that just off the top of my head but i thought that was an interesting one for me to ponder because i love cozy mystery titles they're always so punny, like they're always idioms, like bored to death, sconed to death, that kind of thing. And my favorite idiom, my favorite idiom is probably um, on the ball. So I would have to think of something like someone, someone on, oh, but that would sound like sexual, but maybe that's okay if it's a romance cozy mystery, or maybe it would have to do with like a sport. The other one that just came to mind is, um, like full of hot air so maybe it could be like a hot air balloon cozy mystery and it would be something about like being full of hot air okay last question i'm trying to find something i haven't been asked or answered before thank you everybody for submitting these um i mean i might pull five more like at the end of the video rills asked do you get your toothbrush wet before toothpaste or toothpaste on the brush this is the type of question that you expect me to answer right in this section here's my answer i actually do both I get it wet, I put the toothpaste on, and then I get it wet again. So it's like nice and moist <laughs> before I brush my teeth. I hope you learned something about me today. The people have voted. You are the weakest link. Also, Rob's here. The people voted for pink, 66%. Yeah. Rob said he went on and he voted and he voted for me to buy avocado toast yesterday and you all betrayed him by voting against him. Here we have it. Very cozy. I like the sleeve length. I like the texture. I read the first couple chapters and I have experienced her hitting the wolf, being attacked by the wolf. She doesn't fully know what it is though. Um, she said it was like probably a bear attack or something. She ends up in the hospital and there aren't as many injuries as she knows there to be so obviously like things have healed really quickly or something like that so other people just like know she's in the hospital she has a little bit of wounds but otherwise she's fine um she is living with her twin sister who is about to have a baby there's a little like romance on the horizon i know somebody called this uh rom-com mixed with horror which i find interesting and all i'll say this far is i don't like the writing i really think it's rachel harrison's writing that doesn't work for me it didn't work in cackle it didn't work in the return but i can't pinpoint what exactly it is i am gonna keep reading because i must and maybe it'll get good or at least i can explain to you what it is about it that i don't love right now though i'm gonna gather together some books and listen to the audiobook while i do that i definitely have some things in the closet like duplicate books probably some unsolicited arcs that i can just throw in a little free library and that's what i'm up to we're about to head out. I have made it to the 70% mark of this and I feel the exact same about it. I have nothing really to say. I think there was one um, kind of thought or statement that I remember enjoying in chapter 9. <laughs> Let me find it. Oh no! They're Roman numerals. <laughs> I don't know what a 9 looks like. Is it, is it a V and then what's a 4? That's a V and a 3. Shouldn't that be 8? 
or does it go a three and then a V? Or is a V 10? Well, it doesn't matter because it was in chapter seven, not chapter nine. Um, she's talking about her anger and she is reliving or telling us about something that happened in her past and this trauma and um, how she deals with it and how her mother is not dealing with it. Anyway, she goes, I had so much anger. I didn't know how to experience it. I didn't know how to hold it, where to put it. When you're sad, you cry. When you're happy, you smile, you laugh. But what do you do when you're angry? Not just mad, but filled with this ugly, consuming rage. And I just thought that was a very poignant statement. Like, what do you do with anger? If you lash out, like it's it's a negative thing. And then she follows that with the thing is, women aren't allowed to be angry. Nobody likes a mad woman. They're crazy, irrational, obnoxious, shrill. And I love that. I know the idea of this is great. Like I can see that with um, Night Bitch, the vegetarian, there's this idea of transformation, much like the book I just read about manifestation, you know, your trauma and your anger is it's a big metaphor for when these people turn into these creatures. And I don't know why I never love it. <laughs> what I am enjoying is this building of a relationship within here and how she's dealing with her relationship with her twin sister and how they're in different points in life and how the trauma she experienced her sister didn't. And it's the things that make them different that she used to appreciate, but now it's like painful to acknowledge how their lives are different. It's also like she put her sister, she sees her in such a specific way and thinks she knows everything about her and she has to come to terms with acknowledging that like people aren't exactly what you expect all the time. And just like she is keeping her werewolf identity from people, like everybody is also withholding things about themselves. So there's a lot of realizations happening that I can appreciate. I am excited to continue on though because I want to see like how it all ends. We're heading out and I grabbed a couple books from the closet that were like planned for videos that I'm not going to follow through with. So I have no need to hold on to some of these things. This one, um, Only Human, I'm not going to continue in that series that I can't even remember. Themis Files. And then this one, Dead Water, um, after I bought myself a copy, the publisher sent me one. Or no, that's not what it was. The publisher sent me two? I wouldn't have bought one. Did I pre-order it and it came after the publisher sent it? No, because then I would have returned it. It must have been the publisher sent it twice. Oh, and maybe there are some arcs. This one showed up recently. That just doesn't look like my kind of horror. So I'm gonna visit a couple little free libraries and hopefully there's some interesting things in them and I can ask your opinion on what I need. And then while I'm out, I'm gonna post a story for you to decide between these two because these are the two books I pulled out in my last TBR video from the jar of member selective reads. I can't find the other one and I don't know if I put it back in here by accident, but this is the one that says Alice's Island. That's this one or it's the violence. You know what I want to say? The amount of people on that video who are telling me that this is yellow, it has been bothering me and I was like grabbing things <laughs> that are green so I could show somebody that this is green. Like here, I'm about to put these socks on. These are yellow. This is green. I get that it's neon green and I get that it's like highlighter color, which is like associated with yellow, but it's not yellow. And it's probably just the camera settings, but it's been bothering me. Like here are two books. The top one is yellow. The bottom one is green. I know that it's not green green, but it's in the green family as opposed to the yellow family. Okay, I'm over it now. I can't wait to see which of these you pick because I'm going to finish the audiobook pretty soon here and then I'm not going to read the entirety of these tonight, either one of these, whichever you pick, but I thought I would give you my first impressions and then I'll complete it within the next couple days. That's the plan. I'm going to put on my socks now and go. I don't see anything in this one either that I need to give you options for. Hello. <laughs> you get this one and this one. Bye bye. How to heal a painful relationship. Well, at least you put it back.
Good job. So I went to all three little free libraries. I gave all my books away. I didn't see anything that inspired me to read it. But I did post to my stories just in case somebody spotted something that I needed. I'm just down the road now and the boys are in the snowboard shop um, getting Liam some new boots and bindings because the ski hill opened, I guess it opened today. Liam's not going today though because he's going to like a youth night at the local pool. They have games and swimming and so we're dropping him off there from six to nine and Rob and I are going to go on a date so that means that I can ask my stories um, where we should go but right now let's see if anybody saw anything <laughs> I left it open for a question box somebody said all of it most people are saying no there's nothing there although a couple people are talking about chicken soup for the soul as if I don't already own that and haven't already read it in childhood favorites oh a couple people said to take the rock <laughs> so <laughs> I think we agree um, that today the little free libraries were a bit of a bust but that's okay zoom on in my broken zoom Done in. We call that a yoke of life. What is that? What are you doing with your voice? We're at the mall. I'm yawning. Last time I was in the Hudson's Bay. Me neither, but the I've Bay heard Hudson. good things about their holiday decorations. I feel like everyone is doing this vibe this year, these little trees, but you need like a hundred of them to look really good and I'm not ready to invest. Oh my gosh, it got dark so quickly. Okay, so I went into Indigo and I did another like, what do I need to buy? Now, when I was at Kohl's yesterday, Kohl's and Indigo are the same company, um, but Kohl's just didn't have anything. They don't have the same type of sales section. It's just such a smaller store, so everything is much more limited. Like I didn't see anything that I wanted there except one thing, um, so I couldn't do a poll of like four things. But I saw the same book at Indigo today, so I put this in a poll with three others. These are all things that I was interested in for various reasons, so I let the poll run for like almost an hour because then we walked around the mall and I came back in and I was gonna buy the two, or I did buy the two that had the most votes, which turned out to be Wrong Place, Wrong Time by Jillian McAllister. Um, this is a Reese's book club pick and a lot of people who read similarly to me as far as like a little bit of sci-fi time travel stuff have been saying that this is like an interesting one. And then the other one with the highest amount of votes was Kiss Her Once For Me by Allison Cochrum. Cochrum? Okay, first of all, it looks like something that maybe I should pick up because it's a romance. I really want to read a holiday romance and I decided to do that with my channel members. So we have a seasonal book club. Um, in summer we read like a contemporary, just realistic fiction. In fall we did a horror thriller and I thought a romance would be a good idea. So I asked a bunch of people for their opinions because I don't know anything about holiday romance. And this is a new one apparently that a lot of people are excited about or people who've already read it messaged me and said like, that's a really good one so you should pick it up. I see some of my personal buzzwords in here like marriage of convenience, inheritance, fake relationship. So I guess it's about this girl who has a marriage of convenience with this guy, but then he falls or she falls for his sister, sorry. So now we've successfully dropped off Liam and we can see where we're going for dinner or you get to tell us where we're going for dinner. Okay, so it's either somewhere we love, which would be like Cactus Club, Milestones. Yep. Yeah. Um, somewhere we haven't been in a while. So I was thinking Rods. Yeah. Or Earls. Ooh, I haven't thinking about think Earls would be fun. Okay, yeah. or somewhere new. And that could be anywhere. Yeah. So all of these are exciting, I think. What would you vote for? I'll click on your vote and then we'll see the response. Uh, something we haven't done in a while. Okay. It's somewhere new. Uh, do you want to just drive around downtown? Yeah. Christmas stuff. Oh, God. Supper Club and Cinema. We're trying to figure out if this place you have to get tickets, but the menu looks delicious. <laughs> this is so cute. Did you ever realize the Soul Cycle logo is like the Raven Cycle ley lines? Oh yeah. Or no, Soul Athletics. That's not Soul Cycle. I've never seen a Soul Cycle in real life, so I just assumed that was Soul Cycle. Hello. Rob and I just had 
the most incredible dinner. It was so good. Here. And thank you so much for picking that we go somewhere new because that was yeah, incredible. Phenomenal. Peanut butter pie. Okay, little update. We're picking up Liam and his friends. I'm almost on my audiobook. I've been able to listen to bits and pieces of it, um, and I have like half an hour left. So pretty much as soon as I get home, I'll be done with it. I'll be able to tell you my final thoughts, and then I get to finally check um, what the results are of the final poll if I'm starting the violence or Alice's Island. I'm in my pajamas. You can see my reflection right there, and also people's Christmas lights because of the decorations are out of this world. As I predicted and as I said, this was a three star. I think it didn't do anything wrong. And there's even some fun aspects to this. Like she has this countdown to the full moon, waiting to see what's gonna happen, trying to prepare herself. Normally I don't like shape-shifting stuff, um, but really she only transforms like a couple times and it's kind of brief. And I think the word brief can help me explain what I don't like about her writing. And it's the short sentences. They're, they're very stilted in a way that I feel like I'm skimming the story. It's definitely a stylistic choice and it's intentional and it accomplishes what it's supposed to accomplish because while the pace might be a little bit slow, when you have such short sentences, it makes it feel faster paced than it actually is. It like keeps your attention. I was absolutely never bored reading this, but I felt like it was moving too quickly. And I'm someone who likes to slow down and appreciate like beautiful atmosphere and beautiful lyrical writing. And that's just not what this is. It is what I would consider like a cozy horror, but not necessarily because of like the setting and atmosphere, but more about how intimate you get to be with the characters and how like close knit the community, I guess is. There were good takeaways. The cover is stunning. Happy to have it on my shelves and will recommend it for fans of like for fans of Rachel Harrison. If you liked Cackle, Cackle, you'll probably like this one. Okay, and the decision is the violence with 60% of the vote. I think I might actually have to update you in the morning because it's really late and everybody's gone to bed. So I'm gonna get as far into this as I can before I fall asleep. So let's try to get to 50 pages, which is the first six chapters. And I can tell you just like my first impressions. So I did read the first 50 pages and it's this story of, of violence, which is like an epidemic, um, an illness that is going around where people just have unexpected bouts of violence. So we seem to be following three different perspectives, three different women. There's like a grandmother, a mother and a daughter. And I think it's kind of also about like the cycles of violence because we're following a woman who is being abused by her husband and um, the author's note talks about all of the potential triggers in here and also like her personal um, experience and why the story was important to her. So we have this woman in this relationship that she doesn't want to be in anymore but she feels stuck and then we're also following her daughter um, who's in a relationship she doesn't really want to be either in high school and she's feeling pressured by her boyfriend and it's kind of like on the outside they seem like they're in the perfect relationship so she's just going along with it but she's over it and then there's also like a teacher in the first like chapter that made her really uncomfortable. So obviously we seem to be talking about a lot of bad men and like how it happens, how women end up in these relationships, um, examples that are set from their mothers and a bunch of dynamics are set up at the very beginning and then they start to witness violence that is like unexpected, uncontrollable, etc. And I don't know where it's gonna go from here, but I find the writing very compelling. I don't feel like this is a story that super interests me. You know, it seems kind of like a mix between the loop and the power and all of the conversations that happen in here. I gave both of these like three stars. But then recently I did like the change which has to do with women taking control um, and having power and exposing bad people. Obviously this situation in itself feels like horror, like being in this situation, but I don't know that the actual tone of it is going to feel like scary to the reader in any way. And what it says in the blurb is that it's about self-discovery, legacy, and hope. So I just feel like when I pick up a book like this, I know what the outcome is going to be. So it's hard to feel like 500 pages is needed to tell the story, but that's me not knowing anything about the book beyond just like the initial synopsis and my first impressions. I'm gonna keep reading because it's part of the Goodreads Choice Awards. It was pulled out of the members jar and I'm having a fine time. I am interested to see where the story goes, like what is going to happen in these 500 pages. This is definitely a pretty popular book this year. A lot of people are connecting with it and enjoying it. 
maybe I'll be the same. So I'm going to keep reading this, but I will bid you adieu. And thank you very much for contributing to everything that I did in the last two days. Thank you so much for watching. Even if you watched the polls and you knew what the results were going to be, I had a nice little weekend and I will see you next time. Bye.